Hello and welcome to yet another episode on the White Dog Garage YouTube channel. My name is Bob. In this episode I'm going to be showing you three upgrades that I did to the 12 volt electrical system in my Joco caravan. I hope you find it interesting. The three upgrades that have been made include running a 12 volt high current power line to the front of the caravan to enable charging of the caravan's battery and also to allow a power takeoff for other devices. The second one is installing a 1500 watt inverter that will take the 12 volts in the caravan battery and change it to mains power in Australia which is 240 volts alternating current. And the third one is a two port USB charger. I'm standing beside our 21 foot Jayco caravan. This model is a 2015 model. It comes with a 7 pin flat connector and an Anderson plug heavy current connector. Later ones will come with a 12 pin plug which has got the top 7 plus another 5 and in amongst those five will be the two that correspond to the negative and positive on the heavy current connector. I personally don't think it's the best one, but it's uh, progress I suppose. This van, many like it, many Jayco's, many other uh, models. This connector is actually a connector for the fridge in the van. It doesn't provide any power whatsoever to the caravan battery. Because of this, if you want to connect an external solar power setup, some people plug it into here and wonder why their battery is not getting charged. It's not getting charged because there's no connection between this and the battery. As part of this video today, we're going to run a second line which is going to end in a high current plug and that's going to enable us to run power directly from a portable solar panel to the caravan battery. I use Nava brand twin core 6 BNS or 6 gauge cable to run from the battery to the front of the caravan. Starting the job in the workshop I first fitted a Nava brand maxi blade fuse holder to the red cable. Apart from the inverter Almost all of the materials I used in this job are Nava products. Just to be clear, I have no relationship either with Four Wheel Drive Supercenter, the supplier of the inverter, or to the Nava brand or its brand owner, Brown & Watson International. These are just products that I'm happy to use and I will put a full list of the components in the description below. First thing I did was to strip away part of the sheath on the twin core cable to gain access to the red cable to fit the blade fuse holder. As a point of interest, on this side we have 8 gauge wire, 8 BNS. On this side we have 6 gauge or 6 BNS wire. You can see the difference. Now you're probably thinking you're going to join that to that and you're going to lose power. Well actually this fuse is going to be so close to the battery it's not going to matter. Then I stripped away a section of the insulation on the red cable to make the join with the blade fuse holder cable. Wire strippers don't work too well on thick cable, battery cable, so I used a blade to cut the insulation away. I also stripped a matching length of insulation off the fuse holder assembly before twisting the two exposed cable ends together to make the join. I finished the joint by soldering it. Note that I had already slipped a length of heat shrink insulation past the cable end before making the join. When it was done, I then pulled over the freshly made joint. Next I moved on to fitting a cable lug to the other end of the fuse lead. I crimped this in place using crimping pliers. Off camera, the lug was folded and another lug similarly fitted 
to the black lead, which will be the negative earth or ground cable. I then used a heat gun to contract the heat shrink insulation over the cable lug ends. So here we are at the Jayco's battery. I made a quick look underneath and I think we can put a hole down through the floor without too much drama, without striking anything important. But the first thing I'm going to do is just uncover the uh, battery so I can see where I'm going to run my cables. I ended up deciding to put the hole centrally in front of the battery box. First I drilled a pilot hole down through the floor just to check where everything was. I'll leave the drill just sitting there and I'll go underneath and see where it's come out. Satisfied that it's not going to do any damage down below, I'm going to pull the drill out and I'm going to fit a hole saw. The hole saw I'm using is a 19 or 18 millimeter, about three quarters of an inch. That's a bit bigger than the cable. The cable's about 16 millimeters, just over five eighths. You want a little bit of clearance because you're going to put some uh, sealant down there as well. So now we've made our hole, it's just a matter of feeding the cable down. So, here's our cable coming out, down onto the, uh, the slab here. What I'll do now is I'll start to feed it through the uh, frame rails. And well, you can see that one. And I'll generally follow the electrical line running down the centre there. And uh, I will meet you up the front. We're putting an Anderson plug at the front of the caravan where the solar panels will connect into. You could just leave it hang on the end of the cable. I'm not a big fan of that. I like to attach. But the problem with Anderson plugs is that uh, you need a, a little bit of room underneath to slip the matching one on. And although they give you some mounting holes they're not for very big screws and it makes it a little difficult to mount them effectively. So what I'm going to do is make a mounting plate that will just go on the chassis rail, the chassis outrigger, and hold the Anderson plug and just allow me to screw it in place. All I'm using is a piece of nylon chopping board So, all set, ready to go. And I'll just drill a series of holes now to mount the Anderson plug and it'll be good to go. Here I was ready to fit the Anderson plug and started by slotting the cables in. Having worked out where the plug was to go, I screwed the mounting bracket in place using two self-drilling screws. Note that off camera I had also fitted an isolation switch to the positive lead running to the Anderson plug. I'm not a big fan of just having a circuit open to the world without some way of switching it off. I also fitted some split corrugated conduit over the cable from the Anderson plug 
back under the bottom of the chassis rail and back to where the cable joins the caravan's main underfloor cable run. The line has been run to the front of the van now and we could just connect our leads to the battery but I've got another job to do and I'll leave connecting to the battery till that job's done and that job is fitting the inverter. Now the inverter comes in a nice little box this is the inverter there are two connections that you need, positive and negative, which go to the battery. In the box you also get two leads, positive and negative lead. The one thing they don't provide you with, however, is a 150 amp resettable fuse. I have one here, it's another Nava product, I'll put a, a, a listing for it in the description. The importance of the fuse is that uh, it protects your battery. The inverter has a cutout but to a certain extent it will protect the inverter but more importantly it protects the battery. You don't want to overdraw power from the battery. So, although we've got two leads, we actually need three. We need a lead to run from the positive terminal of the battery to the fuse and then another lead to run from the output of the fuse to the positive terminal of the inverter. And so you don't get two leads, but you really need three, and you need one of these. I'm ready to fit the fuse, and but the first thing I'll do is attach the leads. I've ended up putting a new lug on the end of the lead that's supplied. The basic reason being the bolts on these are a lot smaller than the 10mm uh, ends that uh, the King's lead comes with. Now, I don't know how well you can see that, but one side is for battery and one side is for the load. So the first one I'm attaching is the battery one. So the next fitting, and I put both of them on, is for the inverter itself, which is labelled in this uh, fuse as the load. Now I'm putting it out to the side like this, and the reason being is the cable is going to run across, or it's going to run this direction out of the fuse. And that's a good reason to sort of put them on first rather than put the fuse in and then work out where you're going to go. Then it becomes a matter of attaching it to the wall. You can position it anywhere you like. There's no real expertise to this apart from keep it away from the uh, 240 volt system or the mains power system. The back of the inverter has heavy duty bolt positions where the cables are attached. It has cable covers, uh, black for earth or negative, and red for positive. Very easy to remove. There is a little presser on the bottom and the top. You push them in and it pulls out. And that's uh, the action there. And it clips back in. 
you need to take them off to put the cables on. Of course you need to slip them over the cables at the same time. So I'll slip this one over the positive, the red, and I have a negative cable which is the one that came with the inverter that I will use for the negative side. Now if you forget which is which there's a little plus there for the positive one and a little negative there for the negative one. So I fit the cable here first. I put the bolt through the lug, put that through the matching lug on the inverter, black, negative. Next I put on the flat washer, followed by the spring washer, followed by the nut. It's going to fold under it like that. Uh, just get a general direction for where it's going. It's not that critical. And then using my 17mm spanners, which you could also use 11 16 I tighten it up. Get it slightly out like that, because I've got to get the cover on. That's good and tight. Don't forget to slip your cable cover on. And it's a similar process for the red terminal. Ready got our cover sitting back there. Okay, we're ready to connect now. It's a point of good practice. Undo the negative first. Once the negative lead was undone, I undid the positive leads and added the lugs of the two new leads to the stack, tightened up the bolt on the positive terminal before fitting the black leads, the earth leads, to the negative terminal and tightening up this one as well. Once the cables were all connected to the battery off camera, I then fitted a maxi fuse into the holder. These big fuses are expensive. It pays to leave the fuse installation until you've run all the cables and have them all connected up. Now, the standard test for these inverters seems to be cooking popcorn in the microwave. I'm not going to bother with that. Uh, I'm merely going to turn it on and my test is going to be recharging the batteries for my battery drill. First thing I'm doing is turning it on. The green light tells me it's uh, working correctly. I'll just get the battery charger unraveled. And I'm going to plug in. Battery charger is turned on. Take the battery out. Get the orientation right. And you can't see it, but I can. The little red lights come on to tell me that it's charging. All good. Securing the inverter in place needs a bit of airflow, so I'm just going to use a wood packer, lift it up off the floor, just give it a little bit of room, and 
secure it into place. But also, you want to make sure you've got enough room for the slide to come in, in this uh, caravan's case. Nice bit of clearance there. Now to finish the job, we need to seal up our hole. I'm using uh, roof and gutter elastic silicon sealant. It's a non-corrosive type which is what you want to use. Don't be afraid to give it a, a good application because the last thing you want is water coming up through your floor. And I will also attack it from underneath. The last job I'm doing on this 12 volt upgrade is fitting a dedicated USB charging outlet or a dual system one. This one here, another Nava product. Up until now we've been using a plug-in one like this which just plugs into the 12 volt outlet. We only have three outlets in the van and uh, and that's not a problem because basically it serves mainly for just the television and this outlet. But it's a little nuisance all the time pulling the plug in, putting the plug out and so we thought we'd have a dedicated unit. Now the television runs off a circuit in here and it's that circuit that I'm going to tap into. The trick with this is you need to be wary of your current draw. So that circuit that the television operates off is 10 amps and the television draws 4 amps. It's 2.5 amps in the system. 4 amps from the television, that's 6.5 amps on that circuit. Well 6.5 amps is not going to be a problem for a 10 amp circuit. I'm going to put it about here. Which means I've got to drill a hole in the wall. This is the wardrobe in here. Uh, I've got ready access to uh, the wiring. The actual 12 volt line is over the back here. I used a hole saw to drill the hole for the USB charger. I started the hole on the inside and finished it from the outside, which gives a much neater finish. With the hole drilled, it was a simple matter then to screw the charger to the wall. Before moving on to the wiring, I vacuumed up the sawdust. Not only to be neat and tidy, but also to give the inverter some work to do. I've taken the cover off the back of the existing 12 volt outlet. And there are three wires going in. One is a coaxial cable for the aerial. And the other two are the power wires. We need to know what's positive and what's negative because it's critical for the USB set up that uh, we have it correctly positive and negative. The easy way to check this is just to run a voltmeter across it. It's permanently on 12 volts and if you run your black lead of your multimeter to uh, the black and the uh, red lead of the multimeter to the yellow then you should get a positive voltage reading. And we're seeing plus 12.8 volts on the multimeter. And 
that tells us we got the orientation correct. The black is indeed the earth or the negative and the yellow, to yellow is indeed the positive. The blade terminals at the back of the USB charger are marked positive and negative. Off camera, I fitted female blade connectors to a pair of red and black leads that will connect to the charger. I then fitted these to the USB charger and then ran them across to the wiring loom that is running up the wall and feeding them up the wall to the back of the existing 12 volt outlet. At the 12 volt outlet, I expose the positive and negative supply cables at the back of their respective connectors and then twist it on the corresponding wires. I then soldered these joints. And finally, heat shrink insulation was used to seal the joints. Then the connectors were reattached to the outlet terminals and the rear cover refitted. Off camera, I fitted another cover to the back of the USB charger. That brings us to the end of the episode. I hope you've enjoyed the episode. We've covered a number of 12 volt upgrades to this caravan. We've fitted a USB charging port or dual USB charging port, which will be quite useful. We have fitted a high current line that runs to the front of the caravan. That will enable us to use things like a portable solar panel set that we have. It also allows us to just tap power if we need at the front of the caravan. We have also fitted the inverter, a 1500 watt inverter. Throughout the alterations in the van, I have been using battery tools. And in fact, the batteries from those battery tools are on the charger at the moment, connected to the inverter. But I've also used a soldering iron a heat gun and a vacuum cleaner, all of which were run off the battery through the inverter. So it's a very useful addition to the caravan. Now it'll be even better when we're off grid camping, uh, used for a variety of purposes. If you like the video, I'd welcome a thumbs up. And of course, if you haven't already subscribed and you like the sort of stuff that happens on the White Dog Garage YouTube channel, well, why don't you subscribe? It's easy. Just hit the subscribe bar down below. While you're there, ding the bell so that you get a reminder or a notification from YouTube of the next time a video from the White Dog Garage YouTube channel uploads. Thank you once again for watching. I look forward to talking to you next time. Bye.